Yo, what's up guys? We got Pokegame here and today we are back with the OU Showdown Road to Top 10 in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Today we're using a team for my boy Insult. Big shout out to him. Well, it was actually Finchinator who passed it to me, but I believe it was Insult's uh, double ghost team that he used in World Cup. You can check out my website, PokeUnity.com, if you guys would like to see the team itself. And we're actually just about to get into team preview, but if you've not already subscribed, feel free to. We're really close to 247,000 subscribers. But I also have a goal at the end of the year of 300,000, so you can help me reach that goal by simply clicking subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy this uh, video, and let's get right into team preview. Alright guys, so we're starting off this team with Gengar. Gengar is a phenomenal wall breaker with its newly added Nasty Plot this generation. We have Shadow Ball, Sludge Wave, and Thunderbolt. Obviously, Shadow Ball and Sludge Wave are your dual stab. But Thunderbolt is really nice as it hits Bisharp for neutral and will KO them at plus two, but mainly hitting Pokemon like Mandibuzz, Corviknight, Toxapex, and Manti for a KO at plus two, especially if they are physically defensive Mandibuzz with the added power of the Life Orb. Max Speed, Timid, Max Special Attack. Gengar's main role is to break through fat like Clefable and Toxapex, which we have on this team. Uh, next up, we do have the Double Ghost Core of Dragapult plus Gengar. We're running Heavy Duty Boots, that way we don't have to worry too much about hazards being up. With the Hasty Nature and 12 Defense, we live a knockoff from uh, Zero Aura from full. It does 99%. Uh, max, which is nice for getting off a strong Dragon Darts. With 220 attack investment, we 2-hit KO Defensive Volcarona with Dragon Darts. Hex plus Thunder Wave is just a really nice combination as well for Pokemon that would resist Dragon Darts like Corviknight or Clefable, uh, slowing them down but mainly doubling the power of Hex. And then we have U-Turn for the Momentum. The um, BB Spread just it basically, like, I mean, I guess you can technically pump the Special Defense into attack because uh, like, the 12 HP and 24 Spadef helps you live a Moonblast, guaranteed from Clefable, even after Rocks. But because we're running Heavy Duty Boots, I don't think that's a necessary calc, which is funny to think about. Now, we are using Clefable as the next one with Wish, Moonblast, Teleport, and Protect. With uh, Bold Nature, with 252 HP and 140 Defense EVs. With 140 Defense EVs, we take two Adamant Wicked Blows from Urshifu. One thing to keep in mind about Urshifu is the fact that its uh, ability... I believe it's called Unseen Fist. I always forget the name of its ability because it doesn't come into play too much unless you forget. But you can't protect through that, so I can't like wish protect in front of it. I will have to go for a Moon Blast and knock them out. Uh, the rest is put into Special Defense to help better deal with Pokemon like Dragapult. Leftovers for the longevity. Uh, pairing with this, we do have Mandibuzz. We're running a very speedy Mandibuzz at 180 speed uh, because we're Defog and Foul Play. And this lets us basically bop Swords Dance Bisharp for a 2 8 KO. Uh, once they're at plus two with foul play, we have heavy duty boots to avoid hazards, overcoat to avoid spore from Amoongus. Toxic is nice because it helps us deal with Volcarona, which can be a threat to the team, though of course Dragapult and uh, a few other members on our squad can help check them. And of course Defog, this is our hazard control. This thing can also eat a hit from Zero Aura if need be and get off an emergency foul play because Zero Aura is faster than my entire team. Um, and again, Toxic being able to wear down those walls, like opposing Mandibuzz, can really help out Dragapult uh, in spamming its moves. Next up, we do have Toxapex. Uh, we're running enough defense to tank uh, a Wicked Blow, basically just to pivot in on um, Urshifu, and the rest is just put into Special Defense. We have Scald and Knockoff, so not running Toxic Spikes or Toxic, because we do have that support from Mandibuzz. Uh, knockoff, getting rid of items, really does... Um, help pull and Dragapult break, getting rid of Leftovers, getting rid of Rocky Helmet, all that stuff can help out. Uh, getting rid of the Black Sludge recovery on additional Pokemon, even just choice items in general like Scarf Dragapult can be annoying to revenge kill my own. Uh, then we do have Haze. Uh, the Haze helps us deal with Halucha, helps us deal with you know, Swords Dance, Bisharp and whatnot, just Pokemon like that. And last but not least, oh, also Volcarona. And last but not least, we do have Rhyperior and I'm excited. I love using Rhyperior so much. Now, we're uh, especially defensive Rhyperior because this counts as a Volcarona check. We live a plus one max special attack Psychic easily. Uh, it's not even a 2 KO on this thing. Uh, of course, Giga Drain is a different story, but that's, you know, if it has Giga Drain, then it can't really deal with Toxapex too well unless it's running both Psychic and Giga Drain. Because we're, uh, we're talking about offensive Volcarona here, which would be running Quiver Dance, uh, a Fire Move, Bug Buzz, and then Psychic. But uh, Stealth Rock, Swords Dance, Earthquake, and Rock Blast. 60 speed EVs allow us to outspeed a Poudon because they have to run max defense since they can deal with Urshifu that way. Um, and uh, with Swords Dance and Earthquake, we can actually deal with a Poudon 1v1, especially after we've knocked off its Leftovers or Rocky Helmet, uh, which Toxapex does provide us support, even getting a Toxic with Mandibuzz off on it. Um, 
We do have the Rock Blast, which helps us deal with, of course, Volcarona. Also, Corviknight, like a defensive Corviknight, we can soar his edge and just Rock Blast on. And we can Earthquake as a Roost because they'll lose their flying type, so they'll be uh, weak to the Earthquake. But uh, this thing also outspeeds Toxapex 2 and can deal with it after plus 2. But that is the team for today's episode. Let's get right into the rest of the video. Welcome back to Just a Little Taste with Pokey MMD, where we give you the best deals on the market for the best products out there. Now today we're gonna be talking about the Ridge Wallet. What's the Ridge Wallet you might ask? It is a fantastic wallet that is completely durable. It's slim, it's not old, it holds up to 12 different cards, it ships worldwide, and it has a lifetime warranty. But of course, we can't just show you the final product and expect you to get there. We have to tell you to do it. So step one, take out your old wallet. Now step two is a little bit complicated, but if you play Pokemon, you should be good. But I definitely know that some adults have issues with this. You gotta use Recycle. It's not that hard. Step three, go to ridge.com slash Draco and pick up the Ridge Wallet for 10% off by using code Draco. All right, so big shout out to the Ridge Wallet, of course, for sponsoring this video. Let's just start looking for a battle. I believe we are 1389 last I checked. If I could just see that. Yeah, for 1389, 18 and two. Again, if you guys missed any of my previous episodes, there is a playlist down below, but it looks like we are fighting a dual hazard offense with, uh, well, hazards with dual screen offense. So like dual screen Grimmsnarl, Belly Drum Azumarill, um, maybe bulk up Cinderace. I gotta be very careful here because Azumarill just is, is a problem in general, but uh, ideally, I should be able to deal with it via Toxic Mandibuzz into this. My Clefable helps me deal with their Halucha. Honestly, Rhyperior is borderline useless, but it can deal with uh, a Cinderace and potentially a Mew as well. I love Gengar as a lead in this game because offensively it just does so much damage to my opponent. But I also like Mandibuzz because I can Toxic and Defog, but I don't know if they're dual, uh, lead Mew plus uh, dual screens Grimmsnarl. So I'm actually going to just check real quick on a Calc on, because uh, I think Mew can live Specs if it's OU Suicide lead. It lives Shadow Ball for sure. Either way, Gengar's a phenomenal lead in this game. Uh, it doesn't really allow much from my opponent as they end up leading off with their Grimmsnarl. And I'll just Sludge Wave here. Um, Mainly because, again, this is just such a such a great Pokemon in this game to the point where uh, it, it just doesn't let a lot set up for free. Now, Mew could easily be Hazards. Uh, Azumarill could easily Belly Drum as well. Um, Cinderace should be dealt with by or via Toxapex clicking uh, Haze and then going into Dragapult and dealing with that via Dragon Darts. I feel like that's like my best all around play because Clefable is going to be able to deal with both Halucha and Dragapult ideally. Uh, so I'm actually going to make that play. I'm assuming they might go for something like Bulk up here as they go right for Zen Headbutt and unfortunately miss for them. I'll throw off a Scald as I'm, I must be Bright Powder here, but basically I have a chance to burn them. I'm surprised I didn't. Like I'm actually surprised, I legitimately surprised I didn't uh, burn them right there. But we are wasting their screen turns, which is phenomenal here. And I can safely go out into Mandibuzz because Mandibuzz's role, while it is good to deal with uh, potentially Pult, um, it can still defog away the screens if I need to. They only have three turns left. But it can, it can still defog away the screens if I need to. And mainly I'm just trying to use my Gengar offensively. Same thing uh, with the Simon. So I like Mandibuzz here as they go for another Zen Headbutt. And we'll just simply throw off a Toxic. Um, if they want to make the Azumarill play, What I can do first is, uh, I should be able to roost here once, as they're just going to belly drum anyway. And I'll definitely live a plus six Aqua Jet. I'm going to foul play them. I don't think I'll knock them out due to the fact that they, uh, due to the fact that they have, uh, what's it called? Reflect up. But I don't, I actually don't think I even need to do that, to be honest, because technically Pex could just come in here. Or I could even save Pex and sack Rhyperior, which doesn't really have a role in this game. Go Dragapult and click Hex, and I feel like that is what I'm going to do. So I'll save Mana Buzz right now, just because it's relatively safe. Uh, and like I said, uh, Dragapult will be able to live a plus six Aqua Jet, and Hex will be able to knock out the, um, the Azumarill. And if they go their own Cinderace, because I guess Mana Buzz can technically deal with their Cinderace as well. So just click Hex as we live that hit. Yeah, and Hex will be able to knock them out. Thankfully, the Toxic landed uh, before. And uh, if they do go Cinderace to try and Sucker Punch me, I think I'm good. If they go Mew, Gengar still basically gets a kill right now. So 
They end up bringing out Cinderace. I'm assuming maybe to Sucker Punch me. Doesn't look like it. As they go right for Pyro Ball. And... I don't see a bad thing about me bringing out Mandibuzz and just clicking Foul Play. Considering their answers to it are very, very close to dead. How Lucha could be sub SD, I suppose? Well, it's Mew. Oh, it's just hazard, so it doesn't really matter. I'll defog away. I'm not worried about you. I'll foul play here because it should activate the red card. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm not like necessarily worried too much. Yeah, and I get in the best Pokemon, literally the best Pokemon possible. So I just get off a Shadow Ball here. I should be able to deal with Lucha, and the rest of them just kind of lose to Clefable plus friends. Uh, we simply Thunderbolt here as they go for Endure. Ooh, are they Endure Weakness Policy? Oh, they're Lychee Berry. Okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, Mandibus can still live a Dragon Darts from them too. So I'll just go for Shadow Ball now. Oh, Sludge Wave is stronger. Toxapex will be able to live a hit. Just go for the Scald and knock him out. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> now I have to not, I, I lose my Toxapex there. But then again, I did double miss, I did double dodge, um, as we do have the Endeavor right here. And I guess it might come down to uh, kind of the Dragapult and Cinderace versus my Mandibuzz right there. Uh, I definitely hit them with the, I definitely hit them here with this, and I just foul play here as we live two Dragon Darts plus Poison. I guess it comes down to if they have Sucker Punch on their Cinderace. And do I predict it? But they can also get fully paralyzed here too. So I'm just going to go for foul play. Perfect. We win. I'll go for it because that, the odds were there. So definitely not the most, uh, the cleanest game from me, I would say. Uh, I probably should have just defogged on Mew infinitely to get in Gengar. That was a really cool, uh, good game. That was a really cool uh, how Lucha set. But um, yeah, the, them not going, they also weren't bulk up on Cinderace either. So were they just high jump kick? Ah, whatever. I would take it. So definitely not the cleanest game. So I have to I have to shape up a little bit because you know this is the road to top ten. So now we have um, balance versus balance. I do like Rhyperior here because it's, it's just super strong. Uh, my opponent shouldn't be able to Oko it in one hit. And Toxapex is phenomenal here too and knock off plus uh, Scald respectively. Um, all right, well, perfect. I think I IO next in the last game too, but we'll take that. Don't know why they forfeited there, but you know what? We'll take that. <laughs> Uh, but basically, Gengar was going to go in. If I got it in versus Pex, I just clicked Nasty Plot, and then I got a kill. Uh, this is another one where I feel like Gengar can really go in. I feel like I've used this team too. But Banditor Shifu, Spore, Volt Switch, maybe Magnet, Stealth Rock, Toxic, potentially. And uh, yeah, so Clefable plus... Uh, Dragon, uh, Dragon Bolt's going to be really good here. Uh, they're going to be annoying with their... Uh, there's Zara Aura for sure, and I kind of have to pick a Pokemon to, to be put to sleep by Amoongus, but I don't think I'm that weak to actually grow because Mandibuzz deals with that. Um, Zara Aura, Rhyperior is phenomenal versus, even if they're Grass now, I'll live a hit. Um, and Earthquake can also just knock out Axe which means I could potentially get up Rocks here. Nasty Plot Gengar kills everything on their team, um, especially if I can get it in on like Clefable. I just click Sludge Wave into, or I just click Nasty Plot rather, uh, and just knock out something like Mantine too. So. I like early Rhyperior because it gives me the best lead versus Zero Aura, which is a giant threat versus my team. But actually, I, I love Toxapex because it's ability to knock off my opponent. I think that's better as they go Mantine. So that's great. So I get off, uh, I get rid of its heavy duty boots immediately. They could Skull Burn me, but who cares? Um, I think that me having knock off versus them only having it on Zero Aura is great because, again, I just get rid of all these annoying items. I get rid of all these annoying items. And this Pokemon can easily wake up on very uh, many of their Pokemon. So I go for Scald here because I don't really care if I get put to sleep. They expected me to go Mandibuzz. And I get a burn on Zara Aura. So that's basically game. Yeah, that's a double you don't ever make. Uh, you throw off a Sludge Bomb there if you expect me to go Mandibuzz. Because you uh, can avoid um, you can avoid this happening. At uh, worst case, I get a Scald burn. But basically because Toxapex is able to sit in on Amoongus, Clefable, and Mantine, I was willing to let it go to sleep. Especially because I love Gengar's offensive presence, but I also like Dragapult's speed tier. Just because Dragon Darts and U-Turn Thunder Wave is just super strong. So, we're getting some really quick forfeits in this. Oh, that's Galarian Slump. I was like, 
What's wrong with that slow, bro? But Nasty Plot Gengar, just on, off the bat, looks great. Sludge Wave, Sludge Wave, Thunderbolt, um, Shadow Ball. So all that looks great. No, uh, the Shadow Ball answer doesn't like Sludge Wave, which is great for Gengar. Uh, getting in on this Pokemon in particular. I just want to see the calc on Como because Como looks to be their rocker, so I'm assuming they're more defensive. Yep, so that means that plus two, it does 110% min. Uh, Zero Aura is checked by Rhyperior. Alakazam is a threat, but Dragapult is super good in this game because of its Dragon Dart, so I break even Sash Zam. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Toxapex as a lead just because I get a knockoff on basically anything on their team, whether it be Clefable. This I don't really care too much about. Even getting rid of Como's items could be really good. Uh, so with U-turn, I automatically assume this thing was uh, defensive anyway, but I guess they could have been bulk up here. So I get rid of hopefully a Quick Claw <laughs> on this Pokemon. Uh, it was Assault Vest, so that's even better that I got rid of that item. Um, especially because Manda Buzz is relatively free versus Slowbro. I can't Toxic them, obviously, but I will go for Foul Play anyway just because it's super effective. As you can see, it is 53%, which is so much. And uh, I can just roost right now. Luckily, they did not end up uh, burning me there. So, like at worst, this is just annoying that they can go Corviknight and go back and forth between that and, and this Pokemon. But we'll bring out Pex. I can't, I don't have Toxic, so I obviously can't hit the Slowbro anyway. Um, as Slowbro is going to come out, we know they're Assault Vest. I wouldn't mind burning them, because I'll live one Psychic anyway. So I wouldn't mind potentially burning them. Oh, that does absolutely nothing. I don't want to risk that being a random speed tie, so I'd rather make the uh, the Manda Buzz play here. As they click Scald, great play on their part. And uh, now we're going to make the Rhyperior play, considering they should go Corviknight. And I kind of, I beat Corviknight 1v1, but I want to see if they're body pressed too. I kind of doubt they're body pressed, because they have Como as an answer for Exegirl, but actually at the same time, this definitely should be body pressed. So... If they are, I want to confirm their body press though, so I'm going to click rocks. Uh, because if I confirm their body press, that means they cannot touch Gengar. One of its moves is immune to it, the other one just can't touch it anyway. Uh, sit down. I was about to say, do not disrespect this man. So we saw his ends here as a default. Because body press isn't going to do much anyway. Uh, they're Rocky Helmet too, which is great. So they don't even get leftovers recovery. And I'll Rock Blast. If I hit Como, so be it. Every bit of chip. Oh, <laughs> no, not the Bulletproof. So my mistake. Clefable, I'm just going to scout with Clefable here because they might actually hit me with a Body Press considering uh, the set I am. And uh, I'll Teleport on what I'm expecting to be a Slowbro coming in. Um, they should not stay in with Como ever. They end up going Zero Aura. We're just going to bring out Rhyperior, and if they have Grass Knot and they go for it, it's better that I knock out the one Pokemon that is super good versus my team. So I'm going to click Earthquake here. I don't care if they go Corviknight. I don't care if they go Como. It would be a misplay of them to stay in because soon they're giving me everything. If they give me Alakazam after, then I beat them exactly. So I click Rocks here. Let's see if they have Body Press on this Pokemon. Kind of doubt it. I, I really do. But our period is just really good because, uh, especially because these rocks are going to be chipping away at Corviknight, to say the least. So Alakazam comes out. I do not want them to hit me with a potential uh, attack there. And what I'm going to do here is make the uh, double into. Should I even make the double? If I had U-turn, I'd go for it now. I'm just going to foul play and be safe. Yeah. Especially because now I can just go right out into Gengar. If they roost, I get off huge damage off on them. And instead of Nasty Plotting, maybe I could just use Gengar exactly defensively. So, well, Thunderbolt now. Mainly because it's safe. As they go right for U-turn, and they keep their Corviknight nice and low. So they actually get 2 KO by Foul Play now. I can see them going Alakazam again. Uh, again, I do have the Manda Buzz that can come in. We know they're Encore. I'm assuming Psychic and maybe Focus Blast could be their set. Clefable's role is to come in on this. I want to keep Gengar alive because Clefable could be a problem, but Swords Dance Rhyperior deals with that too. And if I Thunder Wave it, it's great. Uh, I do think Manda Buzz is always my play. As they go for Future Sight. Okay, good to know. I can live the Future Sight here. But I don't want to. I don't want to risk uh, taking it. So 
I rather get in my Manda Buzz and and Roost again. This is a little this is a little bit annoying uh, early on, but I want to make sure I can deal. I have never seen a Future Sight Alakazam. This is the type of Mon that usually goes for attacks first. But they're still very weak to like. If Hyperior comes in, they're really weak to it. So I'm gonna bring out Hyperior because uh, I don't think I don't think Slowbro takes the hit, and I will click Rocks again. Yeah, especially if we're just gonna trade here because. Clefable always comes out. I want to make sure I'm chipping away at Corviknight because Thunderbolt will pick up a KO next turn. Oh, sick. I can't even wish and pass. That's so awesome. So, them revealing that means they're not Iron Defense. Yeah, that's so good. In terms of Dragon Bolt speed tier, I still like it for Alakazam, but I feel like defensively I'll be able to beat Alakazam anyway. So I'm gonna make the Dragapult play here. As a shell sidearm. Yeah, I'm back. Nice. And we'll Thunder Wave here. Uh, the main reason I'm Thunder Waving is because, first of all, I'm surprised they stayed in. Secondly, I can just Hex now. Uh, I'm very surprised you stayed in with Bro. I'm gonna double Thunder Wave because they should go out to Clefable here. And if I if I slow down Clefable, then Rhyperior can then literally win the game. So I'm gonna do it again. As they go Como, which also opens up an endgame with uh, me Thunder Wave and Como, opens up an endgame for Rhyperior. So I'll click Dragon Darts now, uh, just because I want to make sure that Rhyperior gets a kill whenever it comes out. As they do have the Clanging Scales, which is not something I expected there, but that was that was a misplay on my part then, because I definitely didn't expect Clanging Scales in a defensive set. Sludge Wave knocks them out. If they go Corviknight, I can Thunderbolt and knock that out. I don't have to bother predicting. Shadow Ball knocks out slow, bro. Uh, so Sludge Wave picks up a KO here. I did my job with Dragapult. I slowed down two months, but I didn't get to slow down Clefable. But they did give me Como, which is great. So if they defog, they have no rocks on their side. Of course, now they can go Zero or and click Knock Off for free. So that's just something that's a little bit troubling, but not the end of the world because they can't pivot into Como after. Yeah, now they get a, a Knock Off, which I don't, I don't really like. Too much. I would rather go Pex and then pivot into Rhyperior if possible. That looks choice, Ben. That looks hella choice, Ben. Yeah, knockoff should not be doing that much. 30%. Calm down, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry, that is choice ban. So uh, Manda Buzz is a good mid ground because it deals with slow bro coming in. And I can just foul play for some good damage. As they get fully paralyzed, which is perfect for me. Um, and I could make the aggressive play here of going out to Gengar. It's a little bit risky, but it does deal with uh, both Corviknight as well as Clefable coming out. I'm going to make the play because you shouldn't just give me this mon consider it could pivot in on Toxapex every single time. Yep, perfect. And at this point, we'll just click Shadow Ball. I don't think Toxapex can touch me, and if they defog, then I don't have rocks to deal with, and they do. Hmm. Still gonna click Shadow Ball here. As we get Zero Aura upon switching, not bad, and I already know this thing is Choice Ban, so I get some beautiful damage off on Zero Aura. Gonna make the Toxapex play one more time, because I, I know they're Choice, so they have to defog, or I can get in Rhyperior. Actually, the best play is going Clefable, because Clefable lives every hit, no matter what. That's awesome. And we'll just Wish Pass right now into Gengar. That's so awesome, because if they have to defog, I'm good. Or even just Wish Pass into my one mon, so... We'll teleport right now. Oh, and I'm slow. I, I'm slower, so I get a slow teleport, which is amazing. Honestly? It's probably worth me going out to Rhyperior here because they have to be Grass Knot to literally be the threat. Just to Rock Blast. I don't think they kill me with anything. And Rock Blast, I'm, I'm hoping it's enough to deal with them. That is so much damage. Oh no, I needed three hits. Ah, I didn't get it. That's, that's unfortunate. I can still wish pass, so I'm good. 
you are literally useless, so I'm not gonna try. I'm not trying to bring out my. Uh, I'm not trying to bring out my mon on a. On a dazzling gleam. I'm really not. I'll defog here. That way, I don't have to deal with rocks. But I will get up rocks for them, as they wish. Pass. And they're gonna be able to teleport to their uh, to their Zerora now, but. Uh, by at least having in Rhyperior, I say, hey, you better be careful what you click. And I will make the Pex play because it, it, it's a good mid-ground. If they close combat, great play. As they go for Plasma, the same thing, good play. Like I said, Pex is a great mid-ground because it doesn't die no matter what. And I can always get in Rhyperior here and, and live a hit. And get in Manda Buzz because I don't think they can touch me. So like all this leftovers recovery is great. Still gonna click foul play, not gonna bother predicting here. Especially because I get a wish and I get to pass now. I mean, it got a little bit more annoying now, but with no rocks up, Gengar has a field day. So we're gonna wish now, and we're gonna pass. Hmm. Yeah, I'm still gonna wish and pass. As they go Zam. I'll Moonblast first. Oh, I'm dumb. Uh, forgot about the Encore. So I'm, I'm, I'm making some misplays here. They go for Future Sight. That Future Sight is really cool. That tech is really cool. So we go for a Wish now. That is such a cool tech. Are they Specs? Are they specs? The fact that I have to bring out Mana Buzz here is annoying. And Future Sight coming out this turn is very, very frustrating. But I'm going to bring out Pex next. And uh, yeah, as long as the Future Sight is gone, I made this game a lot longer than it needed to be. I probably shouldn't have defogged just because... Well, I mean, if I got the hits off on Alakazam, I'd be good. But I didn't know they'd be not Life Orb. As they go Zero Aura. I always make the Clefable, I feel like I always make the Clefable play here. They should Plasma Fist though. I, I shouldn't risk my Rhyperior, but I, I really want to. Because they should, they should always Plasma Fist here. And I can't risk Clefable taking the hit. Oh, best, literally best case scenario. Perfect. So we click Earthquake, we get a KO if they stay in with Slowbro. Not going to predict here, because this is a threat. Psychic did 63%. And now I can at least get up rocks to uh, to threaten this thing. I would Swords Dance now, but if it could U-turn out into potentially Alakazam. Though I think they'll go Clef. Uh, and rocks mean that this will still go down to me. Hmm. Manda Buzz comes out. As they go for Psychic. I'm going to make the Gengar play. I want him anticipating to be a Corviknight. Exactly. If I Thunderbolt, they die. And that means I keep up rocks. And Corviknight's very, very important. I'm going to Shadow Ball here. Corviknight's... I don't get... This is a guaranteed switch into Rhyperior's Earthquake every single time. So I've unfortunately lost the Pokemon that... That was... I guess that's another misplay on my part, but... I've unfortunately lost that... I'll bring out Rhyperior on what I'm expecting to be a Clefable, because they shouldn't let me foul play them. Perfect. So I can Earthquake and knock out Clef, and then between these guys I should hopefully be able to win. I really messed up, man, and it pisses me off. That's annoying that I messed up there. I did not do enough to Clef. All right, let's go ahead and wish pass. If they go hard, Zam. All right, wish pass to Clef. Oh, it's a Rhyperior. I can't believe, I, I mean, I can believe, but I, I got the plays all wrong versus the, uh, the small, which is very uh, sad. Get an Earthquake, a Fable, because I don't want them teleporting into Alakazam. 
Now, if they go hard Alakazam now, they die. If they go Corviknight, I can Swords Dance. I'm Earthquaking. Yeah, this mod's a threat. I gotta kill this thing. All right, perfect. So we kill Zam. Perfect. Now I can infinitely wish pass out to Rhyperior. Even if they Plasma Fist here, it's okay. Toxapex is expendable. Mandibuzz is actually expendable, but Toxapex is more expendable. I'm gonna make the Clef mid ground because I don't care about uh, I don't care about Corvi. Defogging or, or Brave if it Brave Birds it dies, so I get a wish off. And I bring right out Rhyperior. I don't want to take a Brave Bird for no reason. Rhyperior is in a uh, phenomenal. Again, that Thunder Wave early on really just put me in such a great position because now I get a safe Earthquake off versus their team. And I'll knock out Slowbro. I'll knock out Zero Aura. I'll 2 KO this Mon. If I get rid of Slowbro, then Toxapex is freed up. They go hard Slowbro on the Earthquake from Rhyperior. Let's go. I guess they could go back to pressure stall me with Corviknight if they want to. Okay. That's fine. Click rocks in their face. Now I'll Swords Dance up. That way everything... I will kill something right now. I will kill something right now. I could have Rock Blasted there, but I didn't want to risk missing. Nice play. Right out to Toxic Effects I go because there's no point in taking a close combat if I can avoid it. And I'll knock off here, consider I get rid of the Rocky Helmet. I don't, that's not going to matter too much, but getting rid of Leftovers. Tua KOing Slowbro, I think, is very important too. Double knock off here. Like, at this point, it's just more of an annoying game than, I think, super winnable for my opponent. Because I don't, I don't need my item here to win. I will live one Plasma Fist though. I, I live Bandit or Shifu's move, so I'll live a Plasma Fist from you. They haven't even passed, they haven't even healed up Clef, so the fact that they close combat immediately in the face of a Wish Passer is kind of crazy to me. All right, awesome. That should not have been a 90 turn game, and I did I did make miss, tonight's, I guess, has not been my night, because I have not been playing uh, the best. Um, but I'm willing to admit that. If I got the play, the play versus Corviknight was odd for me because I, I did I did like assess that they probably didn't have a body price considering they they're okay versus extra drill via Como and in terms of outspeeding it they have zero or and, and Rocky Helmet Corviknight can deal with non Rock Slide uh, extra drill anyway because of uh, the Rocky Helmet but I mean if I got the call right on Corviknight none of this would have happened I did play fine versus zero or though which I'm happy about but I definitely didn't play the best versus everything else uh, though slowly realizing my Rhyperior was very tough for my opponent to kill. And obviously Thunder Wave and Como, uh, me sacking Dragapult there was pretty... I didn't expect them to have Clang, uh, clang Scales. Uh, so I got the same guy as before. Um, Manda Buzz deals with you and you. This is Endure, this is Belly Drum. Kind of, I think, similarly. I just want to do the uh, whole attempt to beat them 1v1 type of thing, so I don't think they're bulk up, so I'll always pivot out into Toxapex here as they go for Zen. And then my defensive Manda Buzz should always be able to eat a hit or two, so I don't really mind, um, in this case, what they want to go for as they go Azu. <sighs> they should play rough immediately. Now, if I lose Manda Buzz, I have to be very careful around these two. I think um, literally the only reason why I made the toxic play was because it was okay if that if I made that wrong play right there. So I'm, I'm just going to haze spam now. Um, literally, like what I'm going to do is just haze spam. So they can't belly drum up in my face. That was a good play, by the way, uh, you turning right there. Hopefully I can pass with, because I think they're gunk shot actually. So I'm going to hit them and hopefully get in my Gengar as I get in my Manda Buzz. Not exactly what I wanted, but Gengar does kill at 85% as they go for Flare Blitz and burn me, which is very sad. 
Uh, but we'll Shadow Ball here. I don't care if they go Grim. I'd rather get rid of Mew potentially. Perfect. My Dragapult's still very threatening, but I have to be extremely careful about Azumarill. Now, I can Defog with Mandibuzz, so that's very important. At this point, I kind of sack this. Oh my god, they were adamant. <laughs> Yo, that makes such a huge difference here. Anyway, I U turn out now as they go Grim. I bring out Pex and I simply Scald Spam. And I go Mandibuzz because they can't taunt me. If they Spirit Break, great play. Go ahead and Defog here, that way there's no more rocks in this game. I Scald there because if they get up a screen, I can taunt after and Infiltrator Dragapult is okay here. Oh, and I get a burn. Now, them going Pult, I think is okay because Rhyperior should be good. If I lose because I missed that early Toxic on a Zoom roll, it'd be sad. Rocks up don't really do much, but they might, they might make a difference considering... They might, because I'll... <laughs> I mean, I live that for sure. So now, I, I mean, I definitely get rocks up, which is cool. Um, I'm just trying to think of, like, I knew that wasn't going to kill me. The point was they would die to two life orb hits. Yeah, this is where missing the, uh, this is where missing the toxic might have mattered. But because my is so strong, I guess it didn't at the end of the day. Not bad. So we bring out Pult. We click Hex. I don't get crit by Aqua Jet, which is great. We knock him out. Lucha gets adamant, dragon darted. I simply dragon guarded in. Goku Fable. Click Moonblast. Hopefully you don't get crit with this Pokemon. And then I play off the fact that my opponent doesn't... Uh... I guess they could have Gunk Shot, like I said. I can still get I can still get flinched by Zen Headbutt. They do have Gunk Shot there. All right, this gives me two uh, this gives me two chances to live like a Zen because I can I can always come back. So I'm gonna go for Scald here as I get flinched. Unfortunately, uh, I I have two I have two guaranteed chances to go for attacks here. So, huh? All their moves can miss. Basically, if I brought it in and they got the roll because they're adamant and two KO me, it would suck, but... Let's go for Scald and see if we get flinched. We do not get flinched. They, look at that huge roll they got, by the way. So I definitely made the best play going back and forth. Good game, dude. Not bad. Alright, so we're ending it at 1488. We got 100... Po well, 99 points because 1389. We got a 99 points from the, uh, the beginning of the episode. I don't think I played perfectly this live at all. Uh, in fact, that last game, I'm going to be doing what I did on Jamvat's book. You guys know, I've been, I've been uh, reading Jam's book again and again. And um, it's been helping me get better in terms, like, again, right? Uh, in realizing my mistakes. I think that's a big thing. So I'm going to watch that replay again. And know, I know what I could have done differently already just like while going through it. But I do hope you guys all enjoyed. Of course, if you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. I think that Rhyperior uh, was the boss. Like, Rhyperior was a boss this live. Gengar was good, but it died a lot anyway. But we're almost to the 1500s. Uh, if you guys want to use this team, check out PokeMD.com. A big shout out once again to the Ridge Wallet team for sponsoring me. I don't have, like, not every episode is sponsored by Ridge Wallet, but they have a, a good amount of them. And I have a few other sponsors as well. Um, and thank you guys for being so supportive, too. I saw some people were buying them and ordering them and tweeting them at me. Y'all helping me out with that, too, because... You know, it's like, oh, cool, this guy is sponsored with this. Maybe we can get another one, especially during everything that's going on. So I truly do appreciate that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Check out the team at PokeMD.com. Goodbye, my friends.